Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to walk you through installation of Ubuntu Server version 16.04, long-term support as a virtual machine uh, in the VMware uh, workstation. Uh, we're going to need a couple of things to get started. First of all, you need the Ubuntu uh, ISO file. That's a CD image file. You don't actually need a CD. The uh, uh, image file's uh, really uh, good enough. Uh, so uh, visit ubuntu.com. They changed the site around. You might have to hunt the uh, installation image file uh, uh, down uh, in this particular version of the, of the site. Here it is down here under download. Uh, you can see server. Another place to look for this, usually there's a link at the uh, bottom of the page. Uh, here we see server. Uh, we could click on either of these two links. Uh, that'll take us to uh, somewhere uh, where we can download it if I click this link. Uh, it usually defaults to the long-term uh, support edition. That's the one I recommend. Uh, and uh, unless you're playing around with uh, some uh, particular new feature or, or some uh, got to have new thing, uh, this is the version that I recommend. Uh, and uh, they should give you long-term support for server for uh, five years for this. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, download this right now. I already have it. Uh, there's also a link here for alternative downloads uh, uh, and uh, torrents if you uh, prefer to get it that way. Uh, so go ahead and get that downloaded, save it off to your desktop or some other convenient location. Uh, next thing you're going to need is uh, Workstation uh, VMware. Uh, you can get a free trial of this. I think it's a 30-day trial. You'll uh, trade off a little bit of personal information. Uh, and you'll get a, a working trial uh, when that trial's up, if you want to go ahead and buy it. If you're affiliated with an academic institution, uh, be sure to check for academic discounts. The, the academic discounts on uh, VMware Workstation, I think, are pretty significant. So be sure to check that out. Now, once we've got all that taken care of and you've got uh, Workstation installed, go ahead and fire it up. Uh, it looks something like this. A couple of different ways you can go about creating a new machine. Uh, you can either hit the uh, create new virtual machine here on the home page uh, or you can go to uh, file new virtual machine uh, whichever way you like uh, it'll bring up a wizard uh, now uh, when i've showed you how to install desktop there's an easy install installation wizard uh, we're not going to uh, do it that way when we install server uh, we need to uh, pick a few options during install uh, so i'm going to show you how to get this started uh, and how to get the options going once the installation starts, I'm actually going to um, uh, transfer over to uh, another recording I've done that shows how to do this on, on the Mac. Uh, because once the installation starts, it's, it's exactly the same uh, on Windows and Mac. Uh, so I'm going to get you started through this process. Uh, and then, as I say, I'll, I'll flip you over to uh, a screen recording I've already done just to make sure everybody gets the same, uh, same content once the installation begins. So. Uh, here is the, uh, uh, here is the uh, virtual machine wizard uh, on VMware Workstation. Uh, first of all, we can go ahead and make sure that typical uh, is checked. There, there are some advanced installation options. We don't need those. We can go ahead and check typical. Uh, but on the next, uh, on the next screen, uh, whereas the uh, uh, installer disk image file will run you through um, an easy install, uh, for desktop, and that works just fine, uh, what I'd like you to do is make sure that uh, I will install the operating system later uh, is checked at this part of the installation routine. Uh, so now, uh, let me uh, actually, let's, um, let's get rid of this. Uh, well, okay, that's fine. Let me just move this over a little bit so that you can see that. So I will install the operating system later. Make sure that's checked. Uh, on the next screen, uh, what I'd like you to do then is make sure Linux is checked here. Uh, and under version, uh, we want to make sure that um, Ubuntu 64-bit, pull this up a little bit to make sure that you can see that on the pull down. Make sure that Ubuntu 64-bit is checked here. That, that will make a difference. Uh, then go ahead and click Next. Uh, virtual machine name. Uh, I would like you to uh, put something here that um, is simple, uh, uh, that doesn't have uh, any fancy um, uh, symbols or characters in it. If you look down below, uh, what that's doing is creating a name that uh, uh, is going to be part of a file name on your disk. So you want to choose something that's straightforward uh, in keeping with uh, naming conventions I use in some of my documentation. I'm going to call this um, 
uh, Ubuntu uh, 16.04s. Uh, uh, you can call it something else if you like, uh, but uh, be aware that this is creating uh, a file name on your computer, so keep that part simple. This is the maximum size that uh, uh, the disk will, uh, virtual disk or file size on your computer will attain. Uh, so keep that in mind. This is probably fine uh, for experimentation purposes. Um, if you know you're going to be storing a lot of video files on it, you can bump this up. Probably don't want to make it smaller. Um, it will start out smaller. This is the maximum size uh, it can attain, so keep that in mind. Uh, you can choose whether to store this as a single file or to break this virtual disk up into multiple files. I recommend the multiple file option. The single file option gives you some slight performance advantages. Uh, the multiple file option makes it easier to move it from one computer to another. Uh, and it's almost a necessity if you want to put this onto a flash drive, something like that, um, uh, where you have the uh, a file partitioning um, uh, limitations for uh, big files. So that's my recommendation there. Uh, now, uh, this summarizes the uh, settings. Um, you can leave these alone. It's possible to go in here and customize the hardware. If, if you're an expert, uh, you know you have to change something, you can do that. Uh, this is almost always fine uh, for installation purposes. Um, the, the only thing you can't really change later is the hard disk size, the limitation that I just talked about. Uh, almost all of this can be changed at a later date. Um, we can click finish on that. Uh, now, uh, there is one thing we have to change, which is we have to attach the ISO file. Uh, so at this point, we can come back here and click on the CD DVD, which is auto detect. Uh, and what we want to do now uh, is to use an ISO file. So I've clicked on that. Uh, we want to come back here and use the ISO image file. And now we have to browse to the location on the computer where we save that Ubuntu image file. Uh, and so let me quickly um, uh, browse to this. And uh, what we want is the file we just downloaded. Uh, I'm going to choose the Ubuntu 16.04. Uh, uh, and this happens to be um, uh, 0.1 uh, update uh, server AMD. That's the file we just downloaded from Ubuntu.com. I'm going to click Open. And now you can see we've got Use ISO Image File. And let me move this over uh, to make sure that you can see it. I click Browse. Um, gone out and located the file, uh, use ISO image file, uh, and now we're going to click OK. Uh, and now we can see CD DVD using uh, file, uh, and I've browsed to that image file. Uh, now we can go ahead and power on uh, this virtual machine. Uh, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, uh, boot from that uh, image file. Uh, here, here's where the installation uh, begins to take off, and here's where uh, it's virtually identical to the Macintosh. The only um, difference uh, between installing in the uh, PC and installing in the Macintosh uh, is the uh, uh, mouse capture uh, issue. When, when you click in this uh, window uh, on uh, a Windows machine, um, it swallows up the mouse. And the way to release it on the Windows machine uh, is with a control and the alt key, uh, and that releases the mouse. So you can go back to doing things on your PC. Uh, on the Macintosh, that's the control and the command uh, key to get your mouse back. Uh, so uh, I'm going now to uh, uh, turn you over to my uh, other recording uh, to finish the installation. Uh, and uh, it's demonstrating it on a Macintosh computer, but I don't think you're going to be able to tell the difference because uh, from this point on, it's all um, Linux Ubuntu install. So uh, I will see you on the uh, other side of that recording. Thank you for watching. Let me uh, pull this down so it's within my uh, screen movie window. Uh, and um, uh, note that um, uh, this is now a terminal installation window. Uh, we're going to click in it. Uh, we're going to lose our mouse. Uh, and uh, this now is in terminal mode. Uh, so you're going to be entering this by keystrokes. Uh, we're going to head and click Enter uh, for English. Uh, and um, we're going to click Enter to install Ubuntu Server. Note that there are a couple of other options here if you need to rerun this. Uh, you can um, uh, check the disk for defects. 
uh, probably don't need to do that, but uh, if you have trouble with the installation, you can come back and that will verify that the ISO file that you downloaded uh, wasn't corrupted. Uh, you can test memory. Uh, there's also an option here to rescue a broken system, uh, and that can be handy uh, if, uh, for example, you've lost your uh, password or you need to recover a system and do some other operations. But right now, we're going to go ahead and install Ubuntu Server um, by pressing Enter here. We're going to go ahead and, um, and by the way, uh, control um, uh, command key will release the cursor. Uh, because this is terminal mode, you don't have a mouse cursor. Uh, I just needed to release this to, to pull this up and make sure that we can see the whole thing in our uh, screen movie window. And then I'm going to click in the window again uh, to put us back into the um, uh, terminal mode uh, where only the, the keys work. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select the default for English, obviously, if you, uh, uh, if you have another language or a different, uh, a different installation language, you can pick that. Uh, we're going to uh, specify again the country. I'm going to select the United States. Uh, generally, you don't need to select uh, uh, the keyboard or have it detected. Uh, English is usually a good choice, but if you know that you do, uh, I want to point out that uh, when you see these options down here at the bottom, it's the tab key uh, that moves you back and forth between the different options. Uh, when you see the choice that you want, then you can press Enter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let it default to uh, English again. Uh, and then uh, English again for the keyboard layout. Uh, it will go through a hardware detection routine. That's usually automatic. You can let that go. It's loading some additional components. As we go through here, I may pause or uh, uh, delete spaces for purposes of keeping this uh, installation movie down uh, in time so you aren't necessarily having to watch this spin. Uh, that took several seconds. I deleted some of that. Um, now we come to the point where it's detecting the host name. Uh, the host name is uh, something that uh, it uses internally. Uh, this should be a fairly simple name. Uh, don't try anything long here. Uh, you might actually give this the same name that you gave uh, uh, for the machine name back when we started the installation. Uh, so I might call this Ubuntu 16.04s. Uh, that might be a good choice. Uh, don't use any special characters here. Uh, I would recommend you not use spaces, anything like that. Uh, keep it simple. Uh, when you're ready, uh, you can press the tab key uh, to move to continue uh, and then press enter. Uh, now we'll set up the primary user uh, and the password. Uh, I'm going to keep this simple uh, and in keeping with uh, my other documentation, I'm going to use user1 uh, for the full name, uh, tab uh, to continue, and then press enter to continue. Uh, the username, I'm going to also use user1. Uh, tab to continue, and then press Enter to continue. Uh, password, uh, I'm going to uh, use the word password. Um, tab, and then tab again to continue, and then press Enter to continue. Uh, Re-enter to verify. Uh, again, password. Uh, now, before I press continue here, let me just comment that um, if you choose something else, uh, this is a fairly secure system. It's in a virtual machine on your desktop. There's little chance of anybody hacking this. Uh, obviously, if this is a production system, uh, you want to choose something that's secure. Uh, whatever you do, uh, please write this down uh, and uh, make sure that you remember it. Uh, if you get to the end of the routine and you've forgotten that uh, or there's some other problem, it's going to be easier just to reinstall uh, than it is to try to fix it or, or recover it some other way. Uh, just a word to the wise. Um, you may configure your home directory for encryption. Uh, this is your choice. I, I, under most circumstances, see little need to configure uh, uh, this with encryption. Uh, it does slow things down. Uh, so my recommendation is not to do this, but um, should you choose, you can certainly do so. It's going to set up a network time server. Uh, it's going to try to find out your time zone. Uh, it usually guesses correctly. Uh, if not, uh, you can set it uh, at this point, or uh, you can wait until after the configuration installation is done uh, and reset it at a later time. Uh, now, uh, at this point, 
if this were a, a live system, uh, not a virtual machine, and you're setting this up uh, uh, with real hard drives and so on, uh, then you'd want to think about this. Uh, this is just setting up some space on your hard drive to set up a virtual disk. So this is not actually going to do anything to your real hard drive. It's going to uh, set up what looks like a hard drive um, in a file on your computer. Uh, my suggestion for the virtual machine then uh, is to arrow up to guided use entire disk. Um, you don't need to set up LVM. Uh, you probably don't need to set up um, uh, encrypted LVN. Uh, you do want to use the entire disk. Remember, it's setting up that space for the uh, a pseudo hard drive. Um, that actually is just a file on your computer. Uh, when you have the selection that you want, uh, just go ahead and press enter. Uh, there's only going to be one choice to partition uh, because this is the, as I say again, the file on your computer. So press mm -hmm. enter. Uh, and then uh, it defaults to no, of course, because it wants you to think about it, should this be a real installation. So you can hit your tab key uh, to go back to uh, yes and then press enter. Uh, and then it's going to create um, this uh, pseudo drive uh, in, in the file on your, on your uh, host computer. Uh, and it'll, it'll then install the system. Uh, this will take a few minutes. Now, at this point, it's asking uh, if you need to use uh, um, an HTTP proxy to access the outside world. Um, if you do, then you probably know that you need to enter something here. Um, if this is a, a home computer system, you almost certainly don't. Uh, this might be the case if you're uh, in a work environment. Uh, so uh, I, I, would, I would suggest that um, uh, you almost certainly don't need to do this. Uh, so simply press the uh, tab key to continue and then press enter to continue. And now we get to a prompt that asks you if you want to install automatic updates. So my recommendation is that you not accept this default. You're going to want to install uh, updates, security updates, and so on uh, when you decide they need to be installed. It's pretty inconvenient on a server. Uh, if it um, uh, goes into automatic updating. Uh, so uh, the default is no automatic updates. I would recommend that you press enter uh, and uh, accept that default. Now, here's an opportunity to install additional software. Uh, and please listen to me before you just press enter. Uh, the way that you select these is to arrow up and down uh, and press the space bar to put an asterisk in the package that you would like to install. Uh, if you press continue at this point, it's going to go right into uh, the next uh, uh, step here, and then you'll, you'll miss your shot. So uh, you want to arrow up and down, uh, press the space bar uh, to put an asterisk in the, um, uh, in the package that you want. Uh, and um, uh, uh, then um, uh, you can press the tab key. Uh, to go to the continue bar, and only then should you press enter. So the ones that I would suggest as a default, uh, and the one that I use uh, most often in uh, my other tutorial videos, are going to include the LAMP server. Uh, this includes the uh, Apache web server, uh, MySQL database server, uh, and the PHP scripting language. Uh, that's what's called the uh, uh, LAMP server. Uh, and also the open SSH server. This allows you to use um, uh, the open SSH packages to uh, get a terminal window going between your, your host uh, a computer or another computer on your network uh, and this server. Uh, so uh, with those two checked, uh, uh, those are the uh, two packages that I almost always uh, would have you install. Uh, but you can check out the DNS server, mail servers, uh, uh, the PostgreSQL uh, is an alternative to the MySQL that comes with LAMP. Um, uh, and um, uh, virtual machine host. Uh, so those are some other options. Uh, when you have those ready, then go ahead and press the tab key uh, to get to continue. Uh, and then with uh, OpenSSH and LAMP, as I say, uh, at a minimum check, uh, go ahead and press enter. Uh, and that will continue with the installation. Now, if you selected LAMP, uh, you're going to be prompted for a MySQL uh, root user uh, password. You can leave this blank, uh, but my recommendation is that you go ahead and enter a, a password for the root user to access the MySQL database. 
Uh, my default password that I uh, include in my documentation is just a small case my SQL. Uh, that's M Y S Q L. Uh, that's the one that I uh, uh, use in my documentation. You can pick something else, but again, uh, whatever you pick, write it down because it's going to be more difficult to recover if you forget. Uh, and again, it asks you to repeat it. If you leave it blank, you can set it uh, at a later time. Uh, but if you fill it in and then forget it, uh, it's going to be a problem. Now, the installation is very close to finishing. Uh, it, it's asking you a message about Grub, which is a bootloader. That's the process that uh, uh, initially, uh, when you turn on your computer, looks to try to find an operating system. Uh, if this were uh, a live installation on uh, a computer itself rather than a virtual machine installation, uh, you might have another uh, bootloader on here. For example, uh, the, the Mac um, uh, has its own uh, bootloader. Windows has its own bootloader. Uh, it would be possible to replace that bootloader uh, with Grub, which could then uh, load uh, uh, both uh, the native operating system and Linux. Um, uh, that gets complicated, uh, not much that we need to discuss here uh, at this point. But what this message is telling you is that uh, it seems like there is no uh, bootloader uh, on this uh, virtual disk that you've just installed, and that's true. Uh, and uh, so it's asking for permission to go ahead and install the bootloader. Uh, and the answer to that, of course, is yes, you should go ahead and do that. That's the default. So uh, it's safe to go ahead and say yes here. Again, I just bring this up because uh, this is the same installation process you might use uh, if you were installing this natively uh, on a, a physical computer. Uh, and uh, you want to think about this message if that were the case. But here with a virtual machine, uh, go ahead and take the default. Uh, simply press yes. Uh, the machine will then uh, go ahead and install the Grub bootloader uh, and uh, reboot uh, the virtual machine, finish the installation. Uh, and we'll be ready to log in in just a second here. So the installation is complete. Uh, time to boot into the new system. Uh, make sure to remove the installation media. We don't actually need to do that uh, if you were uh, running this on a, uh, a physical machine. You'd want to pull out the CD, uh, but we don't have to do that here. So just press continue. This is a normal boot. Uh, you see a lot of OKs. You might occasionally see a fail. That doesn't necessarily mean that anything is wrong. Uh, it just means that perhaps it tried to start up a device that maybe you don't have on your system, something or other like that. So as long as you get to this login prompt, uh, uh, you can pretty much ignore those uh, uh, screen messages that go by. Uh, now it's asking for a login. Uh, we log in with our uh, username and password that we set during installation. Uh, hopefully we remember them. Uh, here, um, uh, I enter user 1. When I enter the password, note that nothing is uh, 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 reflected or um, uh, echoed on the screen. Uh, so it, you can't really tell if you mistype something. Uh, so just type it in and it'll, it'll go in blind. Uh, gives you the welcome message uh, and so on. Uh, now at this point, occasionally uh, from first time users who are trying this, I hear, uh, where's my GUI? Um, and of course, server has no GUI. This is it. It's all uh, command line stuff. Uh, so uh, I'm going to leave it um, uh, to your devices to uh, perhaps run uh, some command line tutorials, begin to uh, learn how to use the command line. Uh, there are GUI um, interfaces you can get uh, that you can um, manage a server using a GUI interface. Those are usually run um, through a web browser that you access um, server with. Uh, but server itself doesn't come with a GUI interface. And let me talk then about how you might uh, shut this down uh, in VMware uh, and also talk about the sudo command. Uh, Ubuntu, uh, as configured, comes with the root user disabled. You can enable it. You can look up how to do that. Uh, but to get it, any of what we call the uh, root commands, you use uh, uh, sudo, which is the super user do command. So sudo, uh, use that in front of any command that normally requires um, root access, what we call root access. So sudo 
uh, um, pseudo So there's a shutdown command uh, that you can use. Minus P means also power off and now means do it now. So sudo shutdown minus capital P now case is important. Uh, let me execute that. Uh, we need to enter the password uh, for sudo commands. Uh, that will shut down the system and power it off um, uh, as far as VMware. Uh, and uh, there we go. And we can start that up again by clicking the start icon uh, and uh, so on. Now, uh, let me, um, uh, and, and this will be off screen, uh, so you won't be able to see it, uh, but I will describe it. Let's see. I don't think I can do it from here. Uh, virtual machine. Um, yeah, it did pop down. So at, at the top menu, uh, it's off my screen movie um, limits, but uh, up at the VMware Fusion uh, from the top here, I clicked on the virtual machine tab. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that you can take a snapshot, um, and a snapshot is a backup. Uh, and when I click snapshot, um, uh, I can take a, a current status. Uh, and um, uh, when I click take, uh, it will do a backup of the virtual machine. That way, as I go on and play around with this and maybe do some experimenting and so on, I have a backup of the system. Uh, so that's an important one to know. Uh, I also won't click this here because it'll put it out of my uh, screen dimensions. You can go uh, full screen on this, although with terminal, uh, perhaps there's less of a reason to do that uh, than with desktop. Uh, so this covers the installation of server. I uh, hope this has been helpful. Uh, there are a lot of other things you can do with this. Uh, you can run it in this window. Uh, usually I recommend rather than uh, uh, actually accessing it in, in this window in VMware uh, that you simply start it up uh, and then access it through um, uh, a, a terminal uh, screen. Uh, there are some advantages to that, um, uh, but that's uh, a really perhaps a, a different lecture, a different movie. Uh, Hope you found this helpful. Uh, thank you for watching uh, and good luck.